everybody. I'm Elizabeth from OurPaleoFamily.com. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing, for all those thumbs up and sharing and all your kind comments. I super appreciate it. And I'm enjoying getting to know you. I feel like I'm getting to know some of you. I need some scissors. Um, you're really sharing about your family and how you're using my recipes and how you're feeling. And that makes me super happy. So today... I'm doing a do-over recipe, and there's nothing wrong with the way I made it the first time, unlike the infamous pot roast. It actually turned out great. It's just that I recorded this video. Let's see. I wrote down notes. See how high-tech I am? October 2017, this was Whole30 Day 13. So that was back when I did 30 days of Whole30. And I should tell you what we're making. We're making jambalaya with shrimp and smoked sausage. And it's an awesome recipe, but my my fans, yeah, I'm, just, I'm really just teasing, my subscribers, my viewership has just increased so much since then. And I feel like y'all, I can see which videos are being watched the most. And some of these that I think are really good, the recipes that my family really rave about, um, are not getting many views. And so... I want to redo some of them just so they're um, more in your, I don't know, come, come up so you will notice them. Does that make sense? I'm sure there's some technical word for that, but I can't stand it when I drop stuff on the floor or in the trash can it ends up on the floor. So we're making jambalaya, and this is not an instant pot recipe. It's just on the stove top. I have about two tablespoons of ghee in there, and I'm just going to make this a little bit easier for myself to cut. I want to cut this smoked sausage. This is a whole package of smoked sausage. This was, I think, Neiman Ranch. It's a brand that I buy at Whole Foods that's, you know, antibiotic-free, hormone-free, all that good stuff, sugar-free. And it tastes good. And I don't know how spicy this one is. Let me take, give that a taste. You know, this is fully cooked, actually. It's not spicy at all. Mm -hmm. Don't you love it when it like, hits you in the back of the throat? It's a little bit spicy, and I want to know that because this is sort of a Cajun flair recipe, and I have some Cajun spice that I made up, and I want to tailor the amount of spice that I put in there. So it's not too spicy for everybody to eat, myself included, especially my kids. Um, and sometimes the sausage is extra spicy. So I'm just going to get that in and I'm going to cook it until it browns and then I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to add my vegetables. I forgot to put on my overhead picture video. Let me do that. Again, Gary always had to figure out how do I want this. Oh, uh, no, I don't like this. <laughs> Do not hire me to be your uh, social media or high-tech consultant. That would not be me. <clears throat> Alrighty. And let's see, it's 507. My husband will be calling at some point in the middle of this. And that will disrupt the filming. That's my actual phone. I usually do my overhead shot with an old phone, but it has died. And so it is plugged in right now. Let me tell you something exciting. At least I think it's exciting. I've been, so you may or may not know that I um, am a sales rep for Beauty Counter, which is a, I hope you know what Beauty Counter is because they were the number one Google beauty brand in 2018, which is so exciting. Um, beauty counter is safe, meaning we take out um, or don't use carcinogenic compounds, harmful compounds in our products. Our government does not regulate this industry, so um, beauty counter is regulating it themselves. So anyway, I work for beauty counter, and I was at a training over the weekend, and I'm not a salesy person, and I really went honestly thinking. I'm going to quit because they're going to just talk about sales and it's going to really frustrate me. And it wasn't at all like that. It was 
there was so much education about the industry and uh, what's coming with our company and it, it was super super motivating and just helpful stuff like this was my point um, one of our ladies talked about how she does time blocking I cut that terribly I should have had it on the flat side um, how she schedules her time and I'm I'm a pretty organized person I'm a very scheduled person and I have one of those planners that's one whole page for each day and I fill it up between um, my just family life, kids, and homeschooling stuff, starting my health coaching business, the blog, so my food website, our paleo family, trying to keep up with YouTube and Beauty Counter. I have a lot of stuff going on, and I really learned a lot by doing this time blocking. And as I went through my, my month and tried to figure out how am I going to devote an appropriate amount of time to each of these different pursuits that I have? And what I came up with for YouTube was on Mondays, because Monday is a day that is typically lighter in terms of activity and school and whatnot. We don't have any extracurriculars on Mondays. I'm going to video dinner on Monday. Well, I had already planned jambalaya, which, you know, like I said, I have videoed before. But I, you know, I had it on the, I had it on the meal plan. I got the, the ingredients at the grocery store, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and make it. I'm going to go ahead and video. So every Monday, I'm going to video for you, and then hopefully, within a week, we'll have that out. So you can expect a new video from me on a regular basis. I'm going to talk to my husband. He does my editing and see realistically how long it's going to take him to edit and get the recipe. Um, get the video up for you because in the back side of that is that I have to photograph and write up the recipe well and that um, believe it or not takes a decent amount of time I just posted my white chicken chili and a friend of mine who um, cooks this way and follows the <laughs> website she commented it was white chicken chili she's like um, what kind of chicken do you use how much chicken because I had left the chicken out of the recipe no matter how many times I proofread, I'm very likely to leave something out. So anyway, the process takes a while, but my goal is to get a recipe out for you every week and hopefully a new recipe. I won't do a lot of this um, do-over, but some of them that are super good, like this morning, I videoed carnitas, which you can watch that video. I did it a long time ago. It's an amazing Instant Pot recipe. It's the perfect use of your Instant Pot. Um, but it is another older one, and it doesn't get a lot of views, and it's an awesome recipe. So I wanted to redo that one for you. And it just so happened that the first time I made the jambalaya, I had made carnitas a day or you know a few days earlier. So I had the broth from the carnitas, and I used that for my broth in this recipe, and it was... Amazing. So now every time I make jambalaya, I plan to make carnitas beforehand, but I had not done that this time. So I actually went to the store this morning, got some pork shoulder, and made carnitas. And then the family can eat that. Then my family can eat that for dinner or lunches and whatnot. And, the, and it gave me my yummy broth, which I'm hoping to show you how really good and gelatinous that broth is. It comes from a pork shoulder. And it had not chilled long enough to really set up. So I, that's why I don't have that out on my counter yet. All right, so my sausage is still cooking while I'm chopping my vegetables. The recipe calls for one small onion, and I had half of a pretty big one in there. So I just use that half. One, um, I prefer a green bell pepper in this recipe. It has a different flavor than the other colors. And so I'm using green. If you really hate green pepper but you love red, use red. Totally fine. Also, you know, we try to get all of our colors of fruits and veggies every day. And so I'm going to have tomatoes already. So my red is taken care of. So I'm going to get in some more colors. As much green as possible and then really a little of all the others too. So I've got a red bell pepper. I have three stalks of celery. My recipe calls for two. Yeah, two. But that particular head of celery, I had chopped the tops off to make broth because I wanted the 
I wanted the celery leaves in with my broth. And so I just used three, but they weren't full stock. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm about to fix that out of there and then I'll start picking my veggies. Then that sausage flavored oil, which really there's enough fat in the smoked sausage. You don't have to add a little extra fat to the skillet, but I wanted to and we're pretty much following a ketogenic diet around here. So we're not afraid of the fat and it's good fat. You get um, some good vitamins from ghee made from grass fed butter. So I wanted to go ahead and add that in a tablespoon of ghee. Okay, celery, onion, bell pepper. As soon as I get these veggies in, I'll cut my zucchini. Um, the zucchini, you don't want it to cook as long. So I'll do that last. The shrimp that I'm using, I love these. So I found these at Whole Foods last year one time. They're called Pacific Cold Water Wild Caught, um, that's it, shrimp meat. Shrimp meat. Instead of shrimp, they're just called shrimp meat. They're these teeny, tiny little shrimp. I don't know if you can tell how small they are. There's an occasional one in here that's a little bit bigger. I, I do not want to be the person whose job it is to remove the shells from these tiny shrimp. I just, that really seems like a very unpleasant, um, a very unpleasant job to me. But they were on sale with $14 for two pounds of any kind of wild caught seafood is a really great price. So um, I bought those and they're still frozen. I just dumped them in my bowl. They'll start to defrost a little bit while I'm doing the rest of my cooking. They're actually already cooked. So these are perfect for something like a shrimp salad. But I'll just toss them in at the end and they'll defrost real fast and we'll be ready to go. I do want to give one more plug for Beauty Counter while I'm waiting for that to go. Like I said, we were the number one Google beauty brand in 2018. Not clean beauty, not safe beauty. Now that is a huge trend right now, clean beauty. You've probably heard about it. If you, if you read a magazine or watch the news, you have heard that term clean beauty. Um, and Beauty Counter really um, was, was the, at the forefront of that movement. And um, but, but we were the number one trending beauty brand. So all those brands you see at the mall, everything at the drugstore, Beauty Counter was Googled more than any of them. And that is awesome because I'm hoping that people are really starting to realize that it matters what you put on your skin. I mean, we are like putting lotion all over, we are shampooing our hair, it's soaking into our scalp. Cancer rates are through the roof. I don't want to give you the percentage because I don't remember it exactly, but it's something like one in two women and one in three men will develop some form of cancer in their lifetime. And it did not used to be that way. If you go back, um, since World War II, it's like 90,000 chemicals have been introduced into commerce. 90,000 since World War II. Almost none of them have been tested on humans for long-term safety or short-term safety for that matter. And that's when we started seeing the tide change in these cancer rates and um, fertility rates declining. And it is not a coincidence. So it is super duper duper important what you put on your skin. Beauty Counter has a men's line called Counterman, which I think is a, a cool name. We have an acne um, or oily skin line, which a lot of adults have oily skin, but this is really designed for teenagers and it works amazingly well. And we have kids products, baby products. So we have the whole family covered. Um, Please don't tune out because I'm talking about Beauty Counter. I would love to sell some to you, honestly, that would help support this gig that I have going on right here. But, um, and my kids both need braces this year. So, you know, really do want you to buy some Beauty Counter. Um, I will link to my uh, website below in the notes. But I just want you to be informed. There was actually a Today spot on Clean Beauty last week. It was like a six minute spot. It was in like the fourth hour of the Today Show, you know, where they do longer segments. And they, there are other brands. Beauty Counter is not the only, um, the only brand on the market. Although I will say after using a lot of them myself, I think Beauty Counter works the best. That's why I work for Beauty Counter. Um, I tried a lot of the others that were available before Beauty Counter. But Beauty Counter just came out with mascara two years ago. So 
I used a bunch of other mascaras. Anyway, they're safe. They work amazingly well. And you need to be taking care of the inside of your body. That's just food. And you need to be taking care of the outside of your body if you want to be around for your children and your grandchildren. And I do. So, if you're interested in talking about Beauty Counter, let me know. Or, there he is. Okay, so I fished out the sausage. There's a lot of fat in there. That was a really fat brand of sausage, apparently, and I do not want that much. So, I'm just using my ladle to take some out. There's probably, I'm going to even more that out. There's probably three tablespoons left. That's more than enough to cook all these vegetables. It's pretty hot right now. I just turned it down. Now your sausage will be salty. Your shrimp, they came from the sea. They'll have a little essence of salt to them. Actually, what was in my package was the ingredients were shrimp and salt. So there was some salt as a preservative. So I'm going to sprinkle in some of my Cajun seasoning. The recipe is, is it with this one? No, I'll have to link that. I, I was using a packaged Cajun seasoning, but they all have some kind of usually soybean oil or corn oil. Um, they usually have sugar, maltodextrin, something like that. And so I created my own Cajun seasoning, so that's what this is. And I've washed out an old glass spice jar. And so I will be um, adding that and I'll store it. But it has a little bit of cayenne pepper in it, a quarter of a teaspoon. So it's a, it's a little spicy and it has, um, I think a teaspoon of salt here. I had it written down here. It has paprika, black pepper, white pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, cayenne, salt, and thyme. And you know what? I just realized it did not add the salt. That would have been really disappointing. And it's supposed to be a tablespoon of salt. Altogether, it's like, I don't know, five tablespoons of spices. So, this guy's going to need a little salt. Um, so, just one last word. If, if you're not paying any attention to what you're putting on your skin, your kid's skin, your husband's skin, your wife's skin. Think about that. You know, most people love products. Most women and actually a lot of men love products. Beauty Counter has amazing products. They're beautiful. They work really well. I highly recommend them. They make amazing gifts. So think about that. Okay, we're just going to let this go for a few minutes. Get that on medium. And I'm going to cube up my zucchini kind of the same way. I said here, um, chop celery, onion, and bell pepper to a pretty small dice. So about a quarter of an inch cube is usually what I say. But you really do not have to be particular about it. It really doesn't matter. You just want it to be easy to eat, right? So this would be delicious served with some rice. You prefer white rice or cauliflower rice, which is what we're going to have tonight. So here's the deal. My husband has type 1 diabetes. I work real hard to help him keep his blood sugar under control. And he just wants dessert. He grew up eating dessert, I think, every night. And he wants dessert every night. And so I try to pay attention to get some carbs in his, in his meal because he needs them. So his blood sugar doesn't tank out on him, he could have a seizure, which has happened before. Um, but then I realized if he's always going to eat a piece of chocolate after dinner, or I don't bake that much anymore, but when I was baking, you know, he'd have whatever I had made. Um, I don't need to go to the trouble to put all those um, carbs in our meal. So I would like to eat this way, lower carb most of the time. So that's what I do, and just let him eat his dessert. That's a losing battle, so I'm not gonna fight, I'm not gonna fight it. So I have some cauliflower rice over on my stove, which I like to see my whole kitchen sometimes. And some of my older videos were shot from a different angle. You can see different parts of it, but I could take you on a little tour, show you the rest of the kitchen. I could show you what I'm looking at into my living room. We'll do that sometimes, unless you all send me a comment and say no. I would hate to see that. That's good. It's pretty salty. It's pretty salty sausage. One 
let it cook a little bit more before I add my, ooh, and it is spicy. Okay, so here's the broth I made from the carnitas this morning. Like I said, it has not been in there long enough to fully set up, but you can see how the fat has risen to the top. Um, the pork shoulder is a real fatty cut of meat, which is fine. And, but I don't want to add this. I want to add the broth and all that goodness. It has really great flavor. The spices in the carnitas are basically the same. Paprika, garlic, onion, salt and pepper. So it's just sort of um, adding an additional layer of those same flavors. Look how dark and rich that is. So good. So I wanted to show you how yummy and gelatinous it was and it just hasn't set up yet. So you just have to trust me. I've shown it to you in other videos. That's some really good quality broth. The recipe calls for, I think, two cups of broth. Yeah, two cups of broth. This is probably a little bit more than two cups, but I don't really care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a little more. It doesn't matter if it's a little less. It's fine. I'm going to pour this oil in here, this little package, and get this into my trash can. All right, those are making good progress. It smells so yummy. In goes my zucchini. Once it's cooked for a few minutes, I'll taste that for seasoning. I don't want this to end up over seasoned. How is your weather, everybody? I know we were having that polar vortex a couple weeks ago, and it was like 20 below. So many places in our country. Are you having at least normal winter temperatures now? We are. It was actually 80 last week, which is not normal for North Carolina in February. I mean, we usually have some warm days, but that was kind of extreme. We've got all of our flowering trees are flowering. The daffodils are up and in bloom um, a lot of places around town. But we're back to cold and dreary now. But I hope that you are not experiencing the super duper cold temperatures that that um, you were experiencing a couple weeks ago. And if you are, I hope you're inside and warm. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomato paste. I just realized I'm, I'm out. So I buy these little tubes from Whole Foods and um, this one is coming outside. I need two tablespoons. There's not quite two tablespoons in here, but that's okay. I'll get out as much of it as I can. I love these because it stays fresh in here, whereas if you open a can, you know, it doesn't, um, it's not going to last particularly long in the fridge. It's really broken through. It's the, one of those metal tubes. Ooh, I have some things to show you. So tomato paste is just tomato. So just like other veggies, letting them kind of brown and deepen their flavor, you can do that with your tomato paste too. Let's just talk convenience foods for just a minute. This is for my, I'm going to go ahead and stir that in and continue to let it cook for a minute and then I'll taste those vegetables for seasoning. Okay, this is for my fellow keto eaters or paleo or just, you know, people trying to keep lower carb. I saw, uh, we had a crazy weekend. Um, my husband and son were away at a Boy Scout thing. I had two events, two separate events, Saturday and Sunday. So my daughter, she had parties. She was shipped off having a great time with her friends. We just all were going separate ways. And I ended up doing my Whole Foods grocery shopping Saturday evening, which was a great time. The store was not busy. And I was able to sort of browse a little bit. And I found some, some supposedly keto things to try. And the first was these chicken chips. Have you heard of these? These are like potato chips, but they're made out of chicken instead of potato. So they're um, being touted as paleo and keto and all that good stuff because it's chicken cooked in coconut oil. So here are the ingredients. Chicken chips, which are made of natural chicken, tapioca flour, coconut oil, black pepper, garlic powder, seasoning blend, coconut palm sugar, tomato powder, sea salt, onion powder, smoked paprika, garlic powder, natural smoke flavor, citric acid, and spices. So these are actually pretty pure ingredients. There's a little bit of sugar. So one serving, there are about two servings in this bag. One serving has 10 grams of carbs, which includes one gram of sugar, and seven grams of protein. 
So that is pretty good actually for a chip. So if you are a crunchy, salty person like I am, um, these might be a good option for you. I haven't opened these to taste them yet. This is the barbecue flavor. That's why there were all those, you know, the garlic and the onion and all that stuff, the little bit of sugar. Um, they also had a jalapeno and a sea salt and salt and vinegar. And I got the salt and vinegar and I ate those while I was driving. It's like the crunchy was helping to keep me awake. And they were, there was a lot of flavoring on them and they had the maltodextrin and they had some additives that I was not a big fan of. These, I can't give you a taste test analysis yet, but pretty pure ingredients. I'm excited about those. Let me grab out a little bit of vegetable to taste for seasoning. Um, the other was this Dang, Dang Bar. Dang makes coconut um, products like coconut chips and things. And again, this is this was, um, yes, there it is, keto, right there. So one bar is 210 calories. 10 grams of carbs, 6 grams of fibers, um, total sugars, 2 grams, including 0 grams of added sugar, which is what we want, and 10 grams of protein. So 10 grams of protein and 10 grams of carbs, that's pretty balanced. Um, and then the fat, oh, I missed the fat. Zero trans fat, total fat, 16 grams. Okay, and the ingredients are almonds, chicory root fiber, which causes gastrointestinal distress for some people. So be aware of chicory root fiber. Chocolate, pea protein, sunflower seeds, pea protein crisps, so it's gonna have something crunchy in it. Cocoa butter, coconut natural flavors, chia seeds, sea salt, sunflower, lecithin, stevia extract, and vitamin E. So that one, again, I haven't tried. I'm taking that with me to a little class tomorrow. And um, we'll see how that is for a snack. And I have one more. Um, let me taste this. I think it's spicy enough. I want a little bit more salt. That's like not even an eighth of a teaspoon. That's a pinch. I'm going to add all my broth. That's going to deglaze my pan, get all that yummy flavor up. I also need a cup of tomatoes, and I've chosen to use crushed, just because it's easier than plum, but you can use what you want. I can use the rest of this can to make uh, pizza sauce, so it won't be wasted, no worries. I do want to scrape. So keto is the new paleo, about three years ago when I started my our paleo family. Paleo was very trending. It is not anymore. It doesn't matter. That's still how we're eating because that's still what works for our family, for our health. Um, but keto is the new trending diet and for good reason. People are reversing diabetes and all sorts of other chronic conditions eating this way. And it's easy, really, to eat keto. It's delicious. You're very satisfied. Um, so that's why there are all these new keto products in the store. Okay, so I've, I've added everything. I'm going to add my sausage back in. I just need to add my shrimp at the very last minute. I'll do that when my husband gets home. I just want this to simmer, and I do want to thicken it a little bit, so I'm going to use glucomannan, which is a konjac root supplement. People use it as a fiber supplement. Um, it's a good source of prebiotic fiber, which we've talked about this before. Everybody's heard of probiotics. Those are the good bugs. You get them through yogurt, fermented foods, kombucha, sauerkraut. You should have some in there anyway, but um, a lot of people take a probiotic supplement or eat probiotic foods. Okay, so that's the bugs, but they have to eat something. And so they want to eat prebiotic fiber, which is going to come from your vegetables primarily. But this is this konjac root is actually a good source of prebiotic fiber as well. So that's what we're going to use for thickener. The deal with the konjac root, the glucomannan, is that it thickens really fast. So you really want what you're adding it to to be simmering, which this is just a very slight simmer, which is fine. That's enough. And then I want to add, um, let me see what I wrote down here. I have a teaspoon, which I have a quarter of a teaspoon here. I'll link to this in the notes. I bought this on Amazon. This bottle has lasted me forever. I think it was $11. It's not expensive. You want to stir this up. 
I'll give you the nutrition facts in just a second. And pour it in all at once. And then stir it in because if you let it gel up in here, it'll be gel in there. It'll just be like little blobs of gel. It will, they will not dissolve. So you need to stir it and pour it in right away. So a half of a teaspoon, which is what we added, has two grams of carbohydrates and it's all fiber. So if you're somebody who's really watching your carbs, this is really negligible. If you want to thicken with like arrowroot or um, tapioca, which is what I recommend because they're paleo. If you're not paleo, you can use cornstarch or flour, whatever. That's going to have more carbs. But again, it's so little, it's really, it's really pretty negligible. Okay, my last, I have ghee cooking over there and my cauliflower rice. I'm just keeping an eye on it. So my latest, or my last um, keto treat, these are certified gluten-free and dairy-free. They're called Hail Mary. These are caramel sea salt bites. They were like some almond butter fudge things. These are in the refrigerated section at Whole Foods. That's where I found them. They were with um, like the Kite Hill cream cheese, that's the stuff that's the dairy-free cream cheese, those sorts of things. And these are a, they taste like, to me, a cross between a macaroon and an oatmeal cookie. And so if you eat two of them, that's nine grams of fat, 10 grams of carbs, and two grams of protein. So it's not a protein thing. This is like a keto snack. So you really just need one. So just have one, and that's five grams of carbohydrate. It's not a protein thing. Um, and it's a great keto snack, and they're really delicious. And I think there were, I may have eaten four or five already, and there are one, two, three, there are five left. So 10 of them in there, and I think they were three or four dollars, so not super expensive. You could totally make this yourself. It's almond flour, maple syrup, shredded coconut, coconut oil, coconut sugar, vanilla, and salt. But I know most people don't cook as much as I do, so I wanted to buy some of these things to try them because I know a lot of you are, are buying this stuff. So um, I know these are delicious. You know what? Let's just let's just tap into these. I was going to take them to our um, homeschool group tomorrow, which I still will, and let everybody try. We'll see how they are. Very good. It looks like a potato chip. Very crunchy and thin like a potato chip. It really... Tastes like chicken. Tastes like chicken. Um, all my chip clips are gone all of a sudden. Tastes like, like barbecued chicken. It does not taste like a barbecue potato chip. It tastes like barbecue chicken. I like it. Okay, let's try this too. Oh, I'm just having a little appetizer before dinner. I didn't quite get that open. Let me show it to you. So this is chocolate sea salt flavor. It's not coated in chocolate. There's just some chocolate mixed in there. I like this one. This also is a potential for my son who is allergic to quite a few nuts. He can eat coconut. He can eat almonds, walnuts pecans, he can't eat hazelnuts, cashews, peanuts. So he could actually eat this one. A lot of the, like the more natural energy bars, like Laura Bar and RX Bar, cashews, lots of cashews, and so he can't do those. I'll leave that for him to taste. It's good. It doesn't have a real artificial taste like a lot of the bars do. Yeah, I don't eat a lot of sugar, so it doesn't it doesn't have any added sugar in it. It's just what's naturally in the coconut, I guess. Whatever. Their chocolate just says chocolate, which is really interesting to me. It must be cocoa powder, because labeling laws are you, you know, if it has multiple ingredients, you have to list all the ingredients. So I'm curious about that. But anyway, that's good. I, I like it. I mean, it was two dollars. Yeah, two dollars, I think. So, but for a meal replacement, it's pretty good. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, these plastic bags, I use a ton of them because I just, I buy the cheap ones. They're not worth washing. They all get holes in them when you wash them. But I really would like some good reusable options. I know there are those waxed bags, but honestly, it's got to be easy for me to wash. They need to dry easily. So if you have a reusable snack bag, like you send your kids to school, 
lunches and snacks and things in, please let me know. Um, list in the comments the name, better yet, a link to where you buy them, how you like them, how easy they are to deal with, your kids like them, or your kids frustrated with them, that kind of thing. I would love to do a little bit better than all my disposable bags. Okay, we're just gonna let this go. Actually, I'm gonna taste it. The, the thickness is great. Just that little bit of glucomannan really um, thickened it up just enough. Oh, I swallowed it down way too fast. I'm super hot. Woo! Yeah, that tastes really good. Um, these do need to be refrigerated, so keep that in mind. The others do not need to be refrigerated. Okay, my husband is home, so I'm going to add my shrimp. This is one pound of shrimp. Whatever size shrimp you have is fine. Um, even if your shrimp are not cooked, I told you mine were cooked already, they really just take a minute to two minutes. I mean, maybe up to three if you had some jumbo shrimp in there. Um, but my kids really like the bite size anyway, and they're super easy for me. So that's what we have. Last week, last week one day, my son had this special preseason tennis practice, and it was just an hour, and it's like 20 minutes from here. And my husband had worked from home that day, and it was the day that my kids were scheduled to cook dinner. So I had already prepped them to have to prepare this meal. Well, my son got out of it because he got this special tennis thing. Um, but, so I took him to tennis, and... My daughter was cooking dinner, supposedly, with maybe a little bit of help from her dad. While we were gone, I ran a couple errands, picked my son up, came home. The house smelled amazing. I got to just wash my hands and sit down and eat this delicious dinner. And it was, it was wonderful. And I just thought, wow, you know, <laughs> my husband is a lucky guy because he gets to come home to that every day. He calls, hey, I'm on my way home, what's for dinner? So he gets to know what's coming, then he walks in the door, it smells good, gets to just sit right down and eat this delicious meal. So I got to enjoy it for once and it was really nice. So if you have never had that joy, get somebody else to cook for you in your own house. You go out, even if it's to the grocery store, whatever, go out and then come in and sit down to a delicious meal. It was really quite the treat. So I'm just going to let this come back up to a boil because as soon as that has happened, I will know it is hot enough. And I'm going to dish up the, not the iPad. I'm going to put that away so I don't get food on it. I'm going to dish up um, the cauliflower rice. Okay, so I want to show you my cauliflower rice. I simply put this in a skillet. I use nonstick. I know it's not the best. I was just being lazy because it's super easy. It's not going to stick. And I wanted it not to stick. Um, I was thinking about getting one of those enamel coated, like Le Creuset, is that how you say it? I have a Dutch oven, but I know they have skillets as well. They're cast iron, they're enamel coated. Um, just to see how non-stick it is. And does it stay non-stick? And is that really healthier, which I think it is. So, again, yeah, give me advice on that if you have some. Um, about a tablespoon of ghee in there and some salt. I didn't even do pepper because this is going to be pretty peppery. It's almost boiling. So because of the blog and, you know, styling the different food photos, instead of buying a whole set of dishes that match, when our, when our wedding dishes, enough of them had cracked and they, um, something weird happened to them. We used them in the microwave a lot early on and they would get super hot in the microwave, but the food wouldn't get hot. Oh, like something is wrong. And they were really deep. They didn't get clean in the dishwasher. Anyway, it was time to change dishes. Um, I went to Home Goods and I just buy random dishes. So, so I have different patterns and colors and things for display. And it really makes me so happy when I serve dinner in the, all these different, different dishes. So everybody's going to get some cauliflower rice. I should have probably made some regular rice for my kids, but they will just get to enjoy a little, um, extra carbs and some other. They eat a lot of carbs. They actually went to a birthday party today and had gluten-free pizza, so they got plenty of carbohydrates. And you know what? Vegetables are carbohydrates too, so um, I forget that sometimes. I'm going to kind of load up my own 
cauliflower rice use a spatula and get out the rest. I'm hoping to eat this for lunch tomorrow leftover because I want to see how I do with the shrimp. I've been testing different different foods as far as the histamine content goes. And I don't a fish I know is pretty high in histamine. Um, so I want to see how I do eating it leftover. We'll do one ladle to start per kid. My son is very proud of the fact that he eats more than me a lot of the time. But I still think of him as a kid and I give, and I give him less to start most of the time. Which usually he's happy about because then he has more room for dessert. I really should get back into doing more of my paleo baking so that they're at least eating something that I approve of for dessert. That's my daughter's. Let me give her a little bit more broth. Okay, and then last but not least, my own. I'm super excited for this. My son said, we need to find out what we're having for dinner. We have not been having that enough. I know, I know. It's a little bit more of an expensive meal, but it's super good. Whole 30 paleo. Uh, keto, all that good stuff. Look, I got the biggest bowl. Did you see that? <laughs> I always serve myself last, so I don't do that on purpose, but maybe it's subconscious. You just give that a final taste. It's delicious. It's so flavorful. You could garnish it with a little green onion. That would look pretty, but there's a lot of green showing right there. It's not really necessary. So I hope you, if you haven't seen this one before, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you make it. It's super, super delicious. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.